in the next 10 years, both you and I are going to be driving electric and we are not going to be burning CO2 on that. On that aspect, we're also planning, designing, and we will be building our mine of one of the greenest lithium brine mines in the world. Hello and welcome to Assay TV. Today I'm delighted to be talking with Waldo Perez, who's the CEO of Neolithium. Neolithium has discovered and is developing one of the world's leading lithium brine projects in the Argentinian Andes. Uh, Waldo, it's a pleasure to have you with me uh, today talking through uh, your projects. Um, why don't we start with a quick uh, snapshot of the 3Q project. Um, can you update us on the stage of uh, the project so far? Hello, Adam. Thank you very much. Uh, let me tell you what uh, we are doing right now at the 3Q project. As you know, after we uh, partnered with uh, CITL, uh, the largest battery manufacturer in the world, we started a final feasibility study uh, in a jointly fashion, like along with them. Um, this is not minor issue. This is extremely important. Um, if you see the history of all lithium projects, um, having a partner early on to complete a feasibility study is critical for them to get pregnant, to believe on the project, to be part of the project. In that way, you ensure that the final feasibility study will be acceptable to their standards and to their objectives. And that's exactly what is uh, going on right now. We are working very hard. We are working together. Um, we uh, got uh, an agreement to hire Worley as an international engineering company. And we have the visits from the people of Worley to the project, uh, QP and so on. And we are completing step-by-step uh, step the different stages that were missing for the final feasibility. I want to clarify though that Worley have been working with us before, like one year in advance, doing different uh, separate parts of uh, engineering work for us. So they were not new to the project. This is not something that just, you know, they are starting to learn about it. No, no, they were part of our contractors. Um, they were doing engineering with us for over a year, and now they just geared up, uh, got the, the full team behind us, and we are completing the final uh, feasibility study. Uh, it's boring to detail because it's related to, you know, piping, engineering, you know, design of the ponds, um, mass balances, uh, a very uh, extensive, uh, deep engineering work. But from everything we have seen so far, uh, the outstanding numbers of the pre-feasibility that we're providing to this project evaluation of $1.1 billion and an internal rate of return of almost 50% will be validated in the final feasibility study. So everything we are seeing is more or less along the same lines. So people can understand when you're talking about the pre-feasibility in our case has a plus minus of 15%. And when you are talking about a final feasibility study, we are talking about plus minus 5%. So, so far we are uh, on budget and we are on schedule to deliver final feasibility study at the end of the three quarter, the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth quarter of the current year. Um, also important to mention is the COVID factor. And I always say uh, there, is a, there is an unknown because COVID can affect projects and progress and everything. So far, fortunately for Argentina, we are having very few cases and the few cases are uh, then creating the opportunity for people moving around, doing the work, um, you know, all the engineers that need to visit the project, making progress, uh, particularly, uh, for example, in the pilot plant where we are producing lithium carbonate, very soon we will produce uh, what's probably gonna be the last batch to meet uh, CATL standards. So uh, the project is buoyant of people right now. And, and we believe that we are gonna be on, on time and on budget on the schedule that we have put together. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a busy time and lots going on. That's excellent. Uh, but you seem to be setting a very good pace um, with that development uh, to be on target to, to get that uh, pre-feasibility ready uh, by the end of this year. Um, could I just draw a little bit more on the CATL um, partnership? You know, how you touched on it a bit, but how important is it to have 
um, you know, one the world's largest uh, battery cell manufacturer, um, working with you on the project? And you know, how um, uh, involved are they beyond just sort of being an equity partner? Partner? No, no, they are very involved. Actually, they set up a special vehicle. They set up a, a team of people. They have a, a company called Brum that is 100% owned by CATL that uh, has a full laboratory in China and, and they are working with us. So the work that uh, we are doing together, even though we are in separate places, we have delivered them very large uh, samples that they are working uh, on them uh, and we are working on our side and we are sharing the information that we produce. So they are not uh, standstill investors. They are active uh, researchers. They are active partners. They're working with us, solving issues. Uh, and particularly for us, extremely important, getting the final product to specifications, okay? Uh, yeah. Specs are special for lithium carbonate. I like to tell people that uh, lithium carbonate is not a mine product. It's not a product that comes out of a mine. Copper is a product that comes out of a mine. Gold is a product that comes out of a mine. But lithium carbonate is a manufactured product. As a matter of fact, the carbonate portion, you have to buy it from somewhere else. So this is an, a, 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 an industry that is closer to the chemical industry than to mining. The mining operation of this is extremely simple. It's taking the brine out of the, of the salar and letting it evaporate. The rest is much closer to a chemical company in which is what we, we really are. And in that sense, having a partner that can define very clearly the final product, the specs and what we need is critical. We are one of the few companies, few developing companies uh, that uh, actually already got a very significant partner uh, to ensure success of our venture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just as you touched on the product there, um, it's a lithium carbonate that's going to go directly into batteries for electric vehicles, or is it going to be a host of uh, applications within the lithium ion uh, battery complex? Well, we are not into, shall I say, uh, CATL detail, um, shall I say, uh, distribution of what they are going to need. Now, what I can tell you is that um, our product is going to be battery grade, and therefore it makes total sense to, to, to end up uh, as a compound uh, for, for, for batteries, okay? Please remember that lithium carbonate doesn't go directly into a battery. Lithium carbonate is the precursor that is actually transformed into either a cathode, anode, or even um, the electrolyte. So lithium ends up in the battery, not as lithium carbonate, but as other element. Uh, and within that industry, of course, uh, we don't know exactly the niche <laughs> that uh, we will end up. But what we know is that our product uh, is going to be extremely high quality battery. Rate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, just wanted to come on to the financing side of things again. Uh, you did another uh, capital raise quite recently. Um, can you talk us through that um, briefly? Yes, uh, well, let me, this, this is very, very important because uh, our lithium industry has a very special, uh, special nuances that are related to, to the way we process the product. We take the brine from the salar and we put it in ponds as the one I have here in my back. And these ponds have to be evaporating in the pre-concentration ponds, which are the big ones that you see in, in my back picture. Um, those make most of the evaporation work and it takes about a year for evaporation. And also takes some time because they are very large ponds. It takes some time uh, to, to be filled. So when you're building a lithium project like ours, you need $320 million. However, the pre-concentration ponds require only about $35 million, something like that. So if you have that cash in hand, you can immediately start building 
feeling and evaporating. Even if I have my $320 million in cash, I can't build, it's, it's a wrong use of proceedings to build a plant when you, have, you don't have a feed yet. So by the time you build the pre-evaporation ponds, you let them evaporate, you have a whole year. And we will use that year, of course, to complete the financing of the rest. But the beauty of the financing we have just completed is that we can start construction of the pre-evaporation ponds and filling of brine with the pre-evaporation ponds and the evaporation by, just to say as an objective, the end of the year or this summer in, the, uh, in Argentina, in the next summer. And in this way, we move the project forward to be able to be in production in 2023, even though we are not fully financed. But that initial financing is very important to speed up and be on time on the evaporation portion of, uh, of, of, of the processing that is required anyhow. Yeah, excellent. Many elements coming together uh, to, to move towards that 2023 production de deadline, which is great. Um, so just want to point out, you know, we're at a good point in the lithium market, you know, um, are you excited about um, some of the, uh, uh, what's been going on um, in the market at the moment with um, the demand picture and the demand outlook for, for lithium? Yes, I think that uh, the pandemic had a very severe impact in government policies uh, and make many, many leaders of the world rethink the way we are actually, uh, shall I say, behaving on the planet and giving an opportunity now to make things right. And make things right means in the world today, full electrification of transportation. And that has as a corollary, the creation of a new industry that is in detriment to the old oil and gas industry towards new energy. So vehicles that will run on electricity that will of course have uh, lithium batteries and that electricity will come from green renewable sources. That is the future. We need to get our minds that this is the way it's gonna be and it's gonna happen very fast. In the next 10 years, both you and I are gonna be driving electric and we are not going to be burning CO2 on that. On that aspect, we're also planning, designing, and we will be building our mine of one of the greenest lithium brine mines in the world. In general, in general, brine mines are green. Are green because we don't mill, we don't consume a lot of energy and so on. But our project is gonna be particularly green. Uh, we are gonna use solar power, uh, both in the Salar and down in the plant in Tiambala. Um, we are basically have, we will have, and by the way, we, we hire Golder to evaluate independently that a very, very low CO2 footprint. And this is very important for uh, Europe um, uh, standards that is meeting that the electric vehicle CO2 footprint is good, is low enough, and it starts from the mine. Other competitors uh, like uh, from us and uh, like with us, they, for example, burn fossil fuel to actually produce lithium, which is a little bit of a contradiction. Um, so we are going full solar in our project. Yeah, and you have an advantage there with the project location, obviously, for those uh, environmental credentials. Um, you know, uh, it goes well in terms of the solar, the energy efficiency and the brining processes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. And definitely this is area is one of the best areas in the world for generation of uh, electricity from solar panels. Uh, and we will take full advantage of that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so just to wrap up the sort of overall statement for investors, then it's, uh, it sounds great. You, you know, you're very much on time and on budget. Um, is there your key milestones for 2021 are to get the pre-feasibility um, uh, study uh, completed? Um, what's your, your, your final point on the overall picture for investors interested in neolithium? Well, uh, when you actually see the valuation of our company and the valuation of our project, um, and you see comparison with other companies, uh, for example, if you take uh, companies that are today in construction, they are basically value at the, the full uh, MPV value. Uh, we have a long way to go. 
and we are very close, very close to obtaining full financing. On top of that, we're going to be in construction by the end of the year. So this is going to be an outstanding year for Neolithium. And even though our uh, stock price have uh, increased significantly, dramatically, almost 10 times uh, in a period of six, seven months, there is a good, very long way to go. And again, um, with uh, being on time, on budget, with the biggest industry leader in battery manufacturing in the world, CATL on site, uh, we are going to be the next major lithium producer. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Waldo, that's great. That really uh, covers the project in some good detail there um, and given our investor audience a good insight of where the projects are at. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for taking time to chat with me and run through Neolithium there. Thank you very much.